Hello, everyone. Let's talk about uh, how to use PyTorch uh, to build uh, artificial neural networks that we are recently uh, learning. So let's begin. So PyTorch does have a neural network package uh, called NN that provides uh, very high level building blocks to build uh, the neural networks, uh, starting with fully connected, with convolution, and all these different sorts of layers and functionalities that you will find in the neural network package. So in order to learn more, you can uh, definitely, uh, it's a good, good thing to read, uh, go through the neural network package documentation. Uh, but again, I will, uh, in this particular video, I'll demonstrate some of these uh, common functionalities that you might uh, you might see or may want to work. So neural network package also use auto grid functionality. So uh, I mean, all these building blocks uh, has our differentiable uh, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, so we can, uh, this allows us to quickly easily implement neural networks by putting together, I mean, just stacking uh, the layers, one of layers after layers, and uh, you can uh, calculate the out, I mean, all the weight updates fairly quickly using the automatic differentiation module. Uh, so neural network module uh, contains layers and also uh, it does have a function called forward to do forward propagation. So given an input data, if you'd like to predict, uh, I mean, do forward propagation to this uh, to get the output, you just call the forward and pass the data. So it's, it's I mean, very, very relatable function, right? Uh, uh, so a typical training procedure uh, for neural network in PyTorch is, so you define the neural network that has some learnable parameters. I mean, that should be maybe the required grad uh, parameter should be set to true for weights and biases. Iterated over, the data set of the input, maybe you may want to do so a certain number of epochs. Uh, process input through the network, maybe call the forward function to pass that selected data, compute the loss, and calculate uh, I mean, propagate gradients back to the network parameters. I mean, definitely you call the backward function to calculate uh, the gradient of loss with respect to the parameters that you define, weights and biases, and definitely call, um, update the weights. And you reiterate this process many times, a certain number of epochs, and uh, you just call it, right? So maybe save the base model. So this is the typical process and you're no strangers to this. So PyTorch has a, uh, I mean, uh, you, you can imp implement these, uh, follow this same process that you learned uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, maybe now, since the beginning of this course, uh, you know how to do that. So let's uh, let's just realize this or build our first artificial neural network uh, model using PyTorch. Uh, so again, I've mentioned that the neural network package uh, does have all those building blocks. Uh, it does have uh, conf 2D to, uh, to work with two dimensional uh, uh, convolution operations, or the convolution layers, uh, linear modules to, uh, to, to build that fully connected layers. Uh, there are plenty of other type of layer. I mean, definitely these uh, I've provided some links that you should uh, check uh, the what type of layers that you can uh, introduce that. Uh, and also, uh, if you're, uh, I mean, you can build your custom neural network uh, by extending from the super class, which is the neural network package uh, module class. Uh, so meaning that the class that is a subclass of module class is a module, right? So uh, we can also in the init method uh, define you construct that uh, neural network uh, that you'll see next. So this is actually so 
we see that the uh, we're importing uh, the neural network package thoughts dot neural network as an end. Uh, so as you see here, uh, so we're constructing a class. I mean, creating a class is a sub subclass of nm dot module that I mentioned. So meaning that actually this new class, and you can uh, rename, rename it in a, the way that you want. It can be my net or your net or something uh, in the constructor. Uh, so we need to call the, the constructor of the superclass. Okay. Uh, and then we are uh, calling the neural network nn.conf2d having these uh, size and shape. So six output channels and the five by five convolution kernel. Uh, then the next layer is uh, having 16 output channel, meaning the 16 filters of and, and each filter have five by five dimension. And uh, since there are six output channel, definitely this should match in the next convolution layer. And also then uh, after these two convolution layers, uh, definitely uh, we do linear, uh, fully connected, right? Uh, so you have to match the six, 16 and five. This is gonna be the input channel. And uh, how many, neurons that you need in the next layer. So this is 120 and should match the first argument here and then 84 and then 84 to 10, right? So this is actually one uh, uh, neural network that we're building and probably uh, for a good reason to do 10 class classification. So the 10 class classifier, uh, the input data will first hit at the convolution uh, layer having this configuration, then the next conversion layer, then a fully connected, another fully connected, then the final layer, which is uh, a 10 layer, uh, I mean 10 neuron, 10 output neuron. So the forward function does this. Um, um, it, you see actually that uh, this is actually we're passing X to it, right? So we've, it will be first passed to the first conversion layer then you will activate this, then you pass it through the max pooling layer with uh, stride two, right? So that means the initial size and shape is gonna be reduced by half. Then these, these X is gonna be passed to this next convolution layer. You activate it and going through max pooling. Then you flatten it then you do rectify linear in it and then again I mean, uh, pass it to this first fully connected layer then the next fully connected layer activate it then the last fully connected layer and uh, you don't need to activate uh, because this is a i said uh, 10 output new one that you just return it so this is a, I mean, uh, you can, this is just an example to show you that actually uh, this is very close to design and uh, you don't need to do any special things uh, since you're making this class as a subclass of NN module. It is a neural network modules that uh, PyTorch understands. It can, it can help you find uh, gradients, uh, automatically and you can do that progression the way that you would have done uh, separately. And if you print the neural network, you can uh, you can see actually what are the configuration of this. And uh, since this is a uh, subclass of NN module, the print operation is overloaded uh, to show you the details of the model and how many layers are there and their configuration. So it is very helpful to see actually uh, how to read, uh, how to first construct a neural network architecture and then uh, see actually uh, what are the properties. Uh, so the forward function, so you, you just have to define the forward and backward uh, in the new function that new class that you're designing here. So uh, you have to define that. And the backward function is automatically defined. So you don't need to define the backward function in the new 
uh, calculations, but uh, it, it can be. I mean, you can define if you don't want high to calculate differentiation. I don't know why you need that, uh, but you can. Uh, I mean, override that backward function of the parent class. Uh, you can check uh, what, how many parameters uh, in the in your model by calling the parameters function. Uh, yeah, as you see here. Uh, so list of net parameters, you see that actually it returns 10. So you need to, uh, so these are the number of parameters and the size and shape, uh, I mean, the size is six, one, five, five. So these are the weights that you need to learn. Uh, let's try a random 32 by 32 input. So this is a one particular input. If you pass input to the net, uh, it will call the forward function. Uh, so you see actually that calling the forward function manually uh, of a class, which is a subclass of module is wrong. I mean, uh, Python, PyTorch is gonna throw an error for that. So the call the, I mean, this is actually uh, the name of the class. I mean, the, the object of this class and then uh, as the input data, which is a tensor of uh, random numbers drawing from, drawn from uh, normal distribution. Uh, so this is an initializing the gradient buffers, uh, which is very essential that actually uh, that you reset the gradients. Uh, and whenever you call the backward, uh, to calculate the gradient of all parameters that used to compute out. So you, you, you just call, simply call the backward or you can call backward with respect to something, uh, maybe X. Uh, so torch.nn only supports mini batch gradient descent, mini batches. So the entire neural network package only supports inputs that are mini batch of samples, not a single sample. Uh, so, for example, in nn.conf2d will take in a 4D tensor. So, if your if your past data to the neural network, uh, say for example the forward, you see that actually we have to make it look like uh, the, this is the number of samples that you are passing, number of channels, and the resolution. So, uh, it has to be a four-dimensional tensor number of samples and channels, height and width. Uh, and uh, if you have a single sample, just use unsqueeze uh, zero. So it will add those fake dimension uh, to, to be used in, uh, in, the, in the net function or the forward pass or to be used in, in the network. So before proceeding for for the let's recap, actually all the classes that we 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 know the torch dot tensor uh, creates uh, data as a multi dimensional array with support for auto get operations like backward. Uh, also holds the gradient with respect to the tensor. Uh, NN module is a neural network module, convenient way of encapsulating parameters with helpers for moving them to GPU, uh, exporting and in a parameter is a kind of tensor that automatically registered as a parameter when assigned as an attribute to a module. Autograd function implements forward and backward definitions of an uh, autograd operation. So, uh, so let's dive in more. So you need a loss function uh, in order to train the neural network. So loss functions of neural so you know, Take a look at this link. This is a, a link to the loss function, uh, available loss functions uh, defined in PyTorch. You'll find uh, most of the loss functions that you have learned so far are there. Uh, so neural network MSC loss is uh, the loss that calculates the mean squared error. So as you see here, so uh, mean squared error loss. Uh, so say first you calculate the for I mean you forward pass by calling the uh, model uh, with the input 
four dimensional uh, tensor and say this is the target and you calculate the MAC loss. So the criteria is the MAC loss. So the loss is uh, criteria and this is the output and the target, right? So you have to match this, right? Uh, so you calculate the loss and uh, you call the loss dot backward to calculate the gradient. Right. So this is a chain of uh, input. So you're no strangers to this. I, 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 believe, uh, I believe that you can follow along the chain of uh, differentiation uh, to calculate the gradient. Uh, PyTorch does calculate the gradients for you. Uh, as you see here, loss.gradient function, this is the MSC loss. Uh, and you can verify actually what are uh, the gradients functions that uh, PyTorch is registering every single time. Uh, so loss.backward uh, will calculate the gradients. You need to clear the existing gradients though. Otherwise the gradients will be accumulated to existing gradients. So it's gonna be appended uh, as a list of gradients in every epoch. So you don't want to do that uh, if you're working with convolutional neural networks or a straightforward three-forward neural network, we may need to use that in other neural network architectures that we'll learn next week, which is uh, recurrent neural network. Uh, so zero grad is to initialize the gradients. Uh, so this is just to check whether the calculated gradients are okay. Uh, I mean, just checking this. Uh, and finally, actually, once you know the gradients, uh, you know how to update the parameters, right? So uh, this, you call, I mean, you subtract uh, the gradient with the learning, learning rate, right? So the previous F, which is the F equals F minus uh, alpha times the gradient. Uh, uh, in order to and since there are many, uh, I mean, the gradient descent can be conducted uh, using various optimization functions that we learned in this course so far. Uh, so Python, I mean, PyTorch does have an optimization library, Optim, uh, torch.optim, where uh, you can find all those optimizers, uh, gradient descent based optimizers that you can just invoke uh, with the name, right? So, so this is a stochastic gradient descent optimizer with learning rate 0 0.01. You can find other optimizers as well. So the thing is uh, here, you see that we defined uh, the, I mean, we are, you, we're going to be using, first configuring the stochastic gradient descent optimizer from this Optim library. And uh, we set the gradient, initial gradient to zero then forward pass the input data and we calculate the loss. So in here, then we calculate the gradient. And here you see that we are calling the step function, which is defined in each one of these optimizer that you will find in the library of the package. You just call the step. So what will happen is it will update I mean, the parameters. Uh, and you know what is going to happen. So it's going to be, so the, the parameter minus uh, alpha times its corresponding gradient. So it's, uh, it's that simple. So you're not, I mean, no strangers to what happens in each one of these steps. Uh, but again, uh, PyTorch is very, very customizable. So meaning that actually you can uh, see actually what is happening in each one of these steps. But again, it's, it's uh, very easy to follow along uh, what has been happening uh, in the real experiment. So uh, note that actually that how gradient buffers had to be manually set to zero uh, using this. So you have to set it. So this is because gradients are accumulated. So if you don't zero gradients before each backward, you will begin accumulating gradients, uh, which is a not a desirable property in feed forward. Uh, neural network, but it, but it's essentially is a desirable property in some other network, which we'll see in recurrent neural network in the next week. Uh, PyTorch does have 
other layers like dropouts, batch normalization. Just take a look at the documentation. You will find uh, uh, proper documentation on how to use that. Uh, so now let's train the classifiers. We uh, will be uh, working on Cypher 10, 10 class image classification problem. Uh, so what about the data? So generally we have to deal with image, text, audio, video. You can use a standard Python package that to load the data into number array and you know how to convert a number array into tensor. Uh, for images package like Pillow, uh, OpenCV are very useful for audio data, SciP or Librosa, text data, uh, Cython, uh, NLTK are really good option. Uh, all you need to do is so specifically for vision, uh, we have created a package called Torch Vision. So in PyTorch, there is a Torch Vision library uh, comes with the package, uh, which has some built-in uh, Hello World style data set. Cypher 10 MNIST is one of them. Uh, for this tutorial, we'll use Cypher 10 data set. It has the class classes, 10 classes, which are airplane, automobile. So these are the 10 classes that you will see and each image is uh, is an RGB uh, space, meaning the three channel, and there is uh, width and height is 32 by 32 pixel. So now this is the work environment, uh, working steps is load the data, load and normalize the training and test data from Torch Fusion, and then we'll define the convolution neural network, define the loss function, train, and then test with test data. Uh, so let's first do uh, loading. So using Torch Vision, let's load the data. So Torch Vision uh, library uh, will first load the data. And before that, uh, let's learn about two transformers, transformer functions called two tensor and normalize. Uh, so we transform them to tensors to normalize them between negative one to positive one. Uh, so these are very handy functions. And also we uh, encourage you to data augmentation uh, by resizing and horizontal plane. So there are some transform package yeah, you may use to add different uh, orientation or flip. So maybe uh, rotate uh, the image by 90 degree uh, to add more it's a diversity component into the data set, into, in, into the training, which is beneficial for training. So here you see that actually, uh, so we construct the first transform. So this is a transformer. Uh, so this is a chain of operations that is gonna be done by this transformer. So train underscore transform is a transformer that will transform the input data. Uh, first, it will flip horizontal flip and it will scale it down to negative one to positive one, then it will normalize that uh, using uh, the mean 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in the three channel and variance 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in the three channel. Uh, this is a, a transformer for the test data set. Uh, you see that actually there is, I mean, during the testing, usually we don't want to augment the test data, right? So that's why actually random horizontal flip function is missing. So we'll, what we need to do is just scale it and normalize. So this is the training data and test data. Uh, you see that we passed the transformer, specific transformer that we defined earlier uh, for this call. So what is gonna happen uh, after this is it will load the data and save it into the data current working directories data folder. And it will shuffle, uh, test data it will not be shuffled, what is gonna be the batch size and the class labels. So everything is gonna be stored there. Uh, you can show the image using imshow some of the image. So these are four images, so range four. So we, and their corresponding ground true label. So this is a truck, deer, and this is a cat, and this is a sheep. Uh, 
So, and also since we have a GPU support in this particular con uh, configuration, so let's train on the GPU. So you're no strangers to uh, the devices. I mean, if you have a port CUDA is available, if it returns true, then your device is CUDA. Otherwise your device is CPU. So these are the keyword for PyTorch work environment. Uh, and the way, I mean, you, you're constructing a model, which is net, which is essentially a subclass, an object to the subclass of the NN uh, dot module class. So you just send it. All you need to do is just send this model to the device of your choice, uh, say CUDA. And all the input and the targets, you have to send it to the CUDA uh, device as well. Uh, so define a convolution neural network. Here, this is another uh, NN. So the net module, uh, the convolution neural network was designed. And as you see, that should be, if you'd like to uh, define, build your own neural network, uh, have a class defined, right? And also in the uh, constructor, uh, and also have a class defined, which is a subclass of NN dot module. And you have to define two functions, two member functions. One is the init, which is the constructor, and you have to override the forward function. Uh, and that's it. So you don't need to define the backward. So, and again, here you see that we are constructing our first object and then we send it to the CUDA device. And once we do, uh, again, uh, from the uh, loss function, uh, we're uh, not using MSE loss anymore. So here, this is the cost entropy loss, which is also defined in uh, PyTorch. And this is the optimizer uh, with momentum, uh, just defined here. And, and then uh, it's pretty straightforward. So how many folks that you would like to do? Uh, and what you need to do is uh, construct a batch. And once you have the batch, you just forward pass that batch and calculate loss, calculate the gradient. So loss.backward will calculate the gradient with respect to the, uh, the weights, right? And then, uh, we just optimize our step is gonna uh, how's it? update the parameters, right? And this is just for uh, benchmarking purpose, actually that every 2000 iterations, you would like to see actually what is happening, right? So uh, these are the steps that you see that actually uh, the loss is dec decaying. Uh, the three epochs that we run, these are different batches. Uh, which is not pretty good, uh, although this is only a three epoch run. Uh, if you let it run uh, more, maybe you'll get a good loss. I mean, uh, lower loss than the one that you see here. Uh, once the model training is done, you just save it. Uh, save it using the torch.save function, and it will be saved as a dictionary. The architecture and also the, the weight values are gonna be saved there in the file. Uh, we can load it back. Uh, so we first construct the net object and then load state dictionary from the file that you saved in the previous step. And then you want to test uh, the test data set right, using the model. So this is actually a test data. This is the ground truth. All you need to do is uh, Call net eval and pass those images, the test images to it. And if you'd like to use GPU to do this prediction, uh, so you can, you should send it to the device, uh, which is the CUDA at that point. So these are the prediction that, as you see here, uh, uh, and again, uh, if you run it all the test samples, uh, say 10,000 test data set, um, it turns out that it is 52% correct. And again, uh, 
this is a 10 class classification example. So which is, uh, which is okay. I mean, uh, you see that uh, we have an, uh, for 10 class classification, uh, for 10,000 test data, our accuracy is 52%, which is better than random, right? So, I mean, the random prediction would be 10% accuracy, right? Uh, so randomly breaking uh, any one of the 10 classes out, out of 10,000 uh, data samples. Uh, you can uh, see actually for what classes, well, uh, what is the performance? As you see here, so out of these 10 classes, you see that each individual uh, prediction performance, as you see the board, the performance of this model is really, really poor, 12%, almost random. Right? Uh, so you get a good idea about how to construct and how to evaluate the, a PyTorch model. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.